Oh, I didn't see you there. What's up, guys? How's it going? So I was not planning on making this video today, but I'm going to be doing it anyways because so many of you have been coming over from this cargo ship video. Also, so many of you have been addressing your comments, questions, concerns, any more info that I didn't clarify, and I'm gonna make a video clarifying some of that information today just for you. So you wanna know how to sail on a cargo ship, how to travel on a cargo ship. There are so many different options, and I feel like I clarified a bunch of them on the video, but maybe I just didn't do a good enough job, and there's some questions that you still have left. First of all, for all those new fresh faces, we just hit 7,000 subscribers, so holy crap, thank you so much for all of that. I really, really appreciate it. Welcome to the freaking family, you guys. If you don't know me or you're brand new to this channel, my name's Tall, also known as the Traveling Cloud on here. I make travel videos. I've been traveling around the world for the past three years. I do all kinds of crazy adventures with my friends all over the world, exploring different countries, exploring different areas, and sailing on cargo ships as well. I make videos on this channel three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification button so you get notifications when I make those videos. Right now, I'm in a secret country that you'll find out about in a few days because my vlogs haven't caught up yet, but keep an eye out for that because many, many adventures are coming. Hint, for those of you who follow me on social media, you'll know exactly where I am. So jumping right into it, I was gonna read some of your most frequently asked questions in the comments of this video, and I wanted to just address some things that I didn't clarify so well, and just kinda answer them so you guys have even more information about what it's like to travel on a cargo ship. So one of the biggest things you guys asked me was if there was internet connection or how come some ships have internet connection and yours did not. Listen, this is the deal. My ship was called the MSC Carouge. This is a newer ship, Romanian built, but it did not have internet connection at that time. From what I've heard, the ship has been updated and it has internet connection now, and sometimes certain routes will have internet connection. That is not across the board. Some ships are even newer and they actually have really fast Wi-Fi on them. Some of them will charge you for Wi-Fi. Sometimes you can ask the captain and they actually have a little hotspot where they'll have Wi-Fi all over the world. What my ship had was a little computer that had a email system built in and one time a day the captain would let you go up to the deck and basically write out an email to whoever you wanted and you would only be able to send like one or two emails because it cost a lot of money. But that was at no extra charge. The captain let you do that for free. I think that came out of his pocket so it's a pretty cool thing to be able to do. Once again, internet is, it varies. It's not on every single cargo ship. This one specifically did not have internet, plus my room didn't have a DVD or a TV so I couldn't even watch movies. I was limited to pretty much only my computer, whatever I had on my computer, and music and yoga time. Another question was about the alcohol, drink, slash drugs, what, what was going on, how did I not smoke just a shit ton of pot while I was out there? Here's the deal. Alcohol-wise, they clarify it very carefully on this ship specifically that you're only allowed to have wine or beer. There's no hard liquor allowed at all. Obviously, there's a danger to the crew members and the captain or whatever if, you, if you're drinking like whiskey and you're getting drunk off like crazy amounts of booze on the ship. So they limit the amount of alcohol you have. I had no problem. I actually had some crew members just gave me a full pack of beer. I had, uh, I think I had brought in on like two bottles of wine to the ship and I had no issues whatsoever. So I think, I think they'll let it pass somewhat for, for somebody who's paying to be on the ship. But at the same time, like you got to keep in mind, this is a workplace. It's like being in an office. So like if you were in any regular office, would you be able to bring just copious amounts of booze and drugs on board? And another thing is, no, I did not smoke any pot while I was on the ship. They're very strict about checking you for drugs, especially coming to the United States of America. They actually bring dogs onto the boat. The actual United States Coast Guard or, or Border Patrol comes onto the ship and they do a very intensive search of the entire ship. So. If you're thinking about doing this with drugs, I would not recommend it whatsoever, especially if you're coming into the United States. Another question that I guess I didn't clarify too well on the uh, video, even though I said it was insurance. A lot of people were confused about the fact that I said you need $100,000. You need $100,000 of repatriation insurance. This is travel insurance that will cover you up to $100,000 if something happens to the ship and you're stranded at sea. It depends on your citizenship, so it depends what country you're from, but me being a United States citizen, they will actually come out to sea. Um, I'm pretty sure they have bases all over the world and they'll actually come and get you. And you need to have $100,000 worth of repatriation if in case of an accident something happens. So that's just to clarify that point. You don't need to have $100,000. I definitely did not have $100,000. I maybe had like 200 bucks in my bank account after this because this was a very expensive trip. Jumping back into that question about the cost of the trip, Listen, I know that many of you guys watching this video and watching the rest of the cargo ship stuff are maritime workers, are seamen, are people who work on the cargo ships and you don't make a crap ton of money. I don't make a crap ton of money either. Most of the time when I'm traveling, I'm actually broke. But here's the deal. This was a trip that was pitched to me by a friend of mine in Canada a while ago and it seemed like something amazing to do and I had this last minute moment to be able to do it. I saw that it cost, it was going to cost me about $2,000. So I, 
I jumped on the opportunity because I didn't know when I was going to be able to do something like this again in my life. So I just, I didn't really think about it. I had the money at the time. It was an amazing experience. It really was. It was pretty much life changing. And I know that for many of you guys who work on the ship, it's hard work. It's not enjoyable, but for somebody like me on the outside to be able to experience that nuts to just be out there stranded without any internet, without any phone connection, having to be by yourself within your own thoughts. It was, it was a big growth experience for me. People were comparing this stuff to plane rides or to cruise ships. This is in no way, means, shape, or form a cruise ship, or is it supposed to be a uh, an exchange for a plane? Planes are to get you from point A to point B. This was not to get you from point A to point B. This is a travel experience. This is something you're experiencing. You're not on a plane for 18 days. You're paying 90 euros a night for a bed, for three meals a day, for a shower, for towels, for laundry, for spending time on this ship, for being able to work out at the gym, being able to walk around, being able to experience this actual experience. You don't do that on a plane. A plane is to get you from point A to point B, and by all means, you do that for as cheap as possible. This was not that. Also, to clarify, you can get on a cargo ship for cheaper. There are routes that are very that are cheaper than this, for sure. And comparing it to a cruise ship is, it's there's no point, because the cruise ships are like, they're enormous, enormous houses built on the sea when you get views and balconies and, and food courts and shows and theater and internet. You get a bunch of stuff on a cruise ship that you will never, ever, ever have on a cargo ship. They are not to be compared. Also, a cargo ship is usually smaller. Some of them are very big, but I think they're usually smaller, so you feel the bouncing on the sea and stuff. You can get seasick pretty quick. People were asking me how long was the entire trip. A lot of you guys wanted to know. I thought I clarified this, but my entire trip was 18 days. I mean, it was like 17 and a half if you really count it correctly, but it was 18 days. Another question that was very popular was about Somali pirates. Uh, I don't know if I clarified the route that I was going on, but I was traveling from Italy to Miami. So the route never even crosses close to Somalia. Um, if you're passing through the Suez Canal and areas near Somalia and Sudan, there is a danger of pirates, but it's never something that we had to worry about at all. Like, I mean, the, the captain always mentioned that it's something they look out for just in case, but in this specific group crossing transatlantic, it's never it's never really a worry. I hope this video clarified some stuff on the cargo ship. If you guys want more cargo ship videos, we're gonna make them. You just let me know. Comment down below and let me know what you think about these cargo ship series. And if you wanna see me on another cargo ship, I would be more than down to, to go on another one. I think it would be a totally cool experience and I maybe even try to book one soon if that's something that you guys are interested in. Because I totally, it was such a life-changing experience. I think I would do it again. If, uh, if I could provide that information and entertainment for you guys. So, you know, keep it down in the comments below. Let me know if you're new here, please leave a comment. Say, hi, I'm new here. Welcome to the family. I love you guys so, so much. There's been so many new people coming in, leaving such supportive, nice comments. Come along and join these adventures. Click that subscribe button. Turn on the notification button so you get notifications when I post. Remember, it's every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Also, if you feel like supporting this channel and you maybe want to get to know me better, maybe you even want to chat with me and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, I have a Patreon open where you can go and support this channel in return for cool rewards. So just make sure you check that out. If there's something there you might be interested in, you can send a buck my way and we can have a little exchange. It could be some cool stuff. And uh, and yeah, I love you long time. Please subscribe and become a clap. Become part of the family. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Get excited because there's some awesome content coming up. We're now going three days a week. I love you guys so much. And goodbye, clients.